Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and uh, this is module number 6 where uh, I am describing uh, the sodium ion rechargeable cell. Uh, the technology is very similar to lithium ion uh, technology. So, uh, in earlier lectures we talked about the specific positive electrode material then we talked about negative electrode materials, then we talked about the electrolyte that is being used for sodium ion batteries and then finally, uh, we also um, showed you a case study, uh, some of our own results that uh, how uh, we have used some of this anode and cathode materials uh, based on polyionic uh, compounds uh, building a symmetric cell. And in today's lecture, uh, we will talk about the future perspective of sodium ion cell, where exactly we stand. And uh, as I told um, earlier that uh, commercialization, if you uh, see as compared to the lithium ion batteries, the commercialization aspect of sodium ion batteries still it, uh, still it uh, is in its uh, infancy. So, only one company is there. So, um, mostly I have followed what exactly they are doing. Uh, so, in the process we will be showing that uh, where are the sodium ion batteries market and what is their major applications, stationary storage for renewable energy that was uh, indeed uh, one of them. Uh, but uh, transport application also it is coming up for small vehicles and which will be particularly useful for uh, Indian perspective replacing uh, lead acid battery using sodium acid battery, sodium ion uh, batteries and um, some of the features of the commercial sodium ion cell that I will describe in this particular lecture. So, if you see the commercialization aspect, the first one is sustainability. The raw materials are plenty in earth crust 2.6 percent sodium is there and also a huge source in the sea water, uh, it is full of sodium based salt. So, that manufacturing facility of sodium ion cells unlike lithium ion cell that can be uh, made um, anywhere in the world in fact. And uh, there is uh, one company at least uh, whose website I could find, uh, the company name is Faradian and uh, it is considered one of the leading companies in sodium ion battery manufacturing and um, they have claimed that sodium ion battery can match the best for performing lithium ion performance. So, we will have a look that what is the latest status as far as their report. Cost certainly uh, it is having lower precursor cost and one can use aluminum current collector. So, that itself will uh, lead to about 30 percent uh, decrease in kilowatt hour uh, energy cost uh, in terms of dollar at the cell level. And uh, you can use existing uh, lithium ion uh, infrastructure. So, for pouch you know how to make the pouch cell, you know how, how to make the cylindrical cell. Uh, so, those kind of facility also can be used for the manufacturing of sodium ion cells. So, that is one major advantage that you will not have to change the whole infrastructure, uh, the way uh, we are facing changing the sodium uh, this uh, lead waste uh, infrastructure uh, with the advent of uh, lithium ion batteries. So, that part is uh, uh, not um, there. Safety is better and um, thermally stable solvent and aluminum current collectors uh, that basically makes this uh, sodium ion battery much more safer as compared to lithium ion batteries. Transportation uh, that is also um, a bit better because this uh, um, 0 volt storage or transport transportation is not a problem. So, you can exactly uh, um, uh, store it uh, at its discharge state. And, um, current collector is one of the major, major reasons for that. Now, a lithium ion battery, uh, although I will be talking more about it in my forthcoming lectures, that uh, transport uh, is an issue. This lithium ion battery that have to be stored and transported in the charge state 
and as you know charged state is less stable state because the positive electrode is without uh, uh, lithium and it is prone to fire. Uh, so, that is one problem and uh, there are innumerable uh, uh, incident of charged lithium ion battery that catches fire or they are exploding. Airlines have a very stringent control on both sides as well as number of batteries uh, that is allowed for each consignment. So, these problems are there. So, sodium ion battery they are safer uh, active materials and usually the electrolyte uh, is uh, less volatile having low vapor pressure and sodium ion batteries can be discharged as I said to 0 volt and can be stored and transported at the discharge state. So, their transportation uh, is much more safer as compared to lithium ion batteries. Now, here is some uh, incidents. Uh, 2016 a Tesla model car is S uh, Tesla S uh, that crashed and killed both uh, their passengers and you might have uh, uh, it is known to you that in 2019 uh, many of this uh, uh, passenger aircraft due to the use of their lithium ion batteries uh, they catches fire and uh, they were grounded and uh, fire in the warehouse uh, of the lithium ion battery that is also reported in 2014 as far as some uh, newspaper reports. So, uh, safety is a major concern for lithium ion cells. If you look at the market of sodium ion battery, you know that the high market is in this region. Um, uh, including India and uh, Australia, they have uh, medium market and also the whole part of US uh, that is considered uh, as a good market, uh, South America and Africa also uh, they have uh, lower market and these are the actually use uh, consumer electronics is one of them although it will be a bit heavier the, due to the battery automotive is coming up then power is marginal this uh, power uh, use for the sodium ion batteries industrial use uh, is always there and this part is others. So, it is growing up as you can see starting from 2018 not long back 3 years back it is trying to pick it up the US billion uh, US dollar market as you can see it is exponential almost rising and it is predicted that 2024 it will reach about 60 US dollar billion market. So, this is quite encouraging uh, for us to study sodium ion battery and as you can see Europe is uh, expected uh, to dominate the market. Uh, many of the companies they will participate not uh, all of them they are start they have started to manufacture cells in the commercial level, uh, but Europe uh, is in the forefront and uh, in India also I am pretty sure that it will come up. Uh, in a big way in near future some of the groups academic group uh, we have started working on sodium ion battery it is not very well spread as compared to lithium ion battery, but it is uh, uh, quite satisfactorily the progress is quite satisfactory and uh, I guess that the market will um, come up in very near, near future. Now, uh, mainly two uh, applications as I mentioned one is this stationary energy storage and this is basically uh, for uh, the renewable energy and mostly targeted wind energy as well as solar energy. And um, uh, it is uh, quite interesting because this storage uh, can be over a wide temperature range and uh, as I said the uh, raw material they are plenty and uh, higher volumetric and uh, gravimetric energy density um, of course, that compared to lead acid battery uh, sodium uh, has uh, sodium and battery is having an edge and uh, safety is another uh, concern which is relatively um, better as compared to lithium ion batteries and of course, the cost advantage is one of the major advantages. So, this application area uh, could be targeted as residential and industrial storage 
uh, UPS battery uh, uh, replacing lead that is one area, backup power supplies for telecom that is another area you know the uh, mobile phone towers uh, they need the storage and if it is incorporated with the renewable energy source then storage is important, stationary storage where gravimetric energy density will not play a major role. So, that is another area. Backup power supplies uh, or storage uh, for remote applications and locations like in Bengal, Sundarban area uh, where plenty of sunlights are there and storage is a concern to electrify uh, many of the villages. So, it can come up in a big way and um, um, mostly people are trying for um, uh, to store the renewable energy and mostly solar and wind and uh, these are considered as large scale storage. Transportation is another uh, uh, area that uh, is uh, being considered in a big way and one thing is uh, lead acid battery replacement uh, with uh, uh, sodium ion battery, uh, low speed and low cost electric transport. Uh, in Europe, uh, cycle is one of them, the e-cycle. In India, e-scooters or e-rickshaws uh, along with the e-bikes uh, that will uh, come up in a very big way. And um, uh, the range are quite good for uh, this uh, low scale application. And uh, um, Faradian, they have actually made this kind of battery which you can see one can carry in a carrier of a e-bike. Uh, they use typically uh, a matrix of 4 uh, by 12. I will talk about the how to uh, connect the batteries in series and parallel to increase the voltage and capacity respectively. Typical voltage is a bit low as compared to lithium, it is 2.9 volt and 3 ampere hour battery. Total it will give you about 418 watt hour that is the nominal energy that you can get out of it. Due to having higher energy density as well as improved performance over a wide temperature as compared to lead acid battery, sodium ion battery also is potentially useful for this start, light and ignition, this natural 12 volt battery or the 48 volt battery for uh, uh, mild hybrid electric vehicles. So, one demonstration, um, I, I think I showed one of the pictures. Uh, from Faradan site that uh, uh, e-scooter is already developed by them and a small car also ran by the sodium and batteries. Uh, so, in electric vehicles also it is uh, slowly advancing. If you see the cell chemistry and try to compare with the umbrella of positive and negative electrode which already I discussed in my earlier lectures. You see the requirement of using the earth abundant and low cost element cathodes that actually uh, precludes the use of any cobalt based cathode material. So, it will be less expensive and uh, cobalt is toxic as well. So, cathode with higher tap density, you know the tap density is important because of better packing on the uh, uh, current collector surface, uh, oxides are preferable for commercial cathode, although I have a, uh, a special fascination for polyionic based material, but as you can understand making those material is a bit tricky and you will have to annihilate in argon ambient. So, oxide is good uh, layer structured material and um, polyanion based material they are having a relatively low tap density. Uh, so, uh, industry prefers the oxide based candidate. And we already talked about P2 base layered cathode oxide, they are very easy to synthesize, but unfortunately they have lower sodium content. You know that uh, uh, basically uh, your uh, capacity is related uh, to the participating electron uh, um, moles of electron and that is in fact related to how many lithium or how many sodium you can extract from your. Uh, positive material. So, they are they are the source of uh, your uh, this movable alkali ions. So, their P2 type of layered oxide is having a problem and uh, they also suffer uh, irreversible phase transformation from P2 to O2 type 
you remember that in, uh, in, in the first lecture of this module, we talked about uh, this kind of orientation P2 to O2 uh, kind of phase transition that takes place. Um, um, of course, about 4 volt if you, uh, if you charge it. So, this kind of transition minimize the suitable, uh, it can be minimized by uh, uh, suitable um, uh, substitution, aliovalent substitution of magnesium and titanium. And although this uh, P2 type of cathode, they offer increased average discharge voltage and higher intrinsic ionic conductivity, which is also important that you need to increase the ionic conductivity for sodium ion to move inside the uh, positive electrode. Um, so, they cannot deliver capacity as high as their O3 type counterpart uh, due to their limited sodium ion content. So, that is one of the problems. Therefore, uh, the thing that is uh, most probable and Faradian exactly did that. The combine the high capacity atten attainable O3 type of material with higher discharge voltage and increased rate capabilities offered by the P2 type phase. So, uh, basically they mix this together. So, they designed a range of mixed phase materials which is another way for lithium ion battery also it is possible that if you can mix uh, say layered uh, layered based uh, uh, positive electrode with uh, uh, your spinel based uh, material. So, not much studies have been done, but many of the companies in their own R and D's they are working on this type of uh, mixed phase materials and uh, it is proved that they provide excellent all round performance. So, different compositions uh, that has been tried of O3, which is a typical composition uh, this one and P2 uh, type of cathode and they have mixed it uh, with 25 percent of O3 with 75 percent of P2 and various other combinations and uh, they have developed uh, uh, depending on the nature of the targeted energy storage application of course, that what is exactly needed. So, that is one way the industry grows that it is not arbitrarily they select the composition, but they have a stringent specification of the battery that is needed and then accordingly tune the composition to meet the electrochemical characteristics. Uh, the voltage window is 2 to 4.35 volt uh, material delivers a near theoretical capacity about 156 milliampere hour per gram at a little bit low rate about C by 5 rate. And uh, if you can calculate the theoretical capacity of this material, you will see that this is about 165 and the redox is uh, 224, so, nickel plus 2 is oxidized to nickel plus 4 uh, valence state. Mm. And uh, also 4.1 to 2 volt reversible capacity is 147 um, or uh, in this voltage range basically 121 milliampere hour per gram that capacity was obtained. So, 20 percent capacity is fed uh, up to 3000 cycles uh, when a 0.1 ampere hour power cell cycled at 1 C rate at 4 to 1 volt. That is part of their data that uh, uh, I have taken from their uh, application note in the website. There are many other reports. I would like you to go through their website and see that uh, what exactly the composition they are using and try to understand that uh, where from this plateau actually comes. Um, if you do the differential capacity plot, you get the uh, oxidation and reduction peak and you will have a fairly good idea that what kind of reaction is going through uh, during the charge and discharge operation. So, this mixed uh, type uh, cathode which is O3 uh, P2 type they are expected to experience uh, quite low volume change that is one of the other concern. Um, so, this is due to uh, the opposing change in C axis lattice parameter of the O3 and P2 phase. So, one is expanding another one is contracting and uh, that uh, basically is related to the crystal structure, the transition metal uh, and oxygen octahedra, the tilt of it 
along with the lattice parameter that is playing a major role to uh, cancel the, uh, the um, volume expansion. So, that is a good sign. Uh, so, this is uh, the material that they have used. Alloy based anode uh, can be used uh, for making a full cell uh, or conversion cathode which are having very high um, capacities. Uh, but, uh, as you know that uh, they have the problem of uh, voltage hysteresis, they have the problem of volume change uh, which is as high as 200 to 400 percent. So, cyclability of this anode uh, is complicated, again you will have to go for the nano structuring um, or addition of uh, relatively low tap density carbonaceous additive that is also another uh, concern. So, this will uh, eventually um, increase the cost and uh, uh, also it will decrease the tap density of these oxides. Uh, so, uh, basically due to this drawbacks, uh, they are not commercially used. So, alloy based anodes and conversion based oxides, they have not yet been used. So, the commercially hard carbon, uh, basically they are derived from different sources, they are important and quite appealing for commercial perspective. Uh, it actually gives you very good structural integrity. So, from commercial point of view, um, cost, then scalability, purity, tap density, surface area, they are very important um, for the commercial adaptability and also the higher reversible capacity when it comes to formulate um, hard carbon and uh, as a negative electrode to form the sodium ion cells. So, uh, usually carbohydrates and lignin rich biomass tend to yield hard carbon and you remember what is hard carbon, their uh, spacing is uh, uh, a bit uh, larger as compared to your graphitic uh, material. So, graphite cannot be used for sodium ion battery because of the shorter uh, spacing between the layers. So, this biomass derived charts, this uh, often contain inorganic impurity that require purification by means of chemical treatment. So, the carbonates and transition metal oxides, uh, they are less technologically challenging and far cheaper to eliminate uh, than aluminosilicate. So, that is also another point. So, nature of impurities and selection factor in case of biomass precursor that is very important. Usually high temperature pyrolysis that is recommended uh, after such treatment to reduce the oxygen containing functional groups that often participates in parasitic reactions and cause irreversible capacity. So, specific capacity of ferradian proprietary hard carbon, I do not know how they make exactly. So, that is 330 milliampere hour per gram at C by 20 rate with a high first cycle coulombic efficiency, it is about 91.9 percent. So, this is the typical uh, discharge and followed by the typical charge for commercial hard carbons and ferradian based hard carbons. So, you can see that their discharge capacity uh, is a bit high as compared to the other commercial hard carbons and also they are having better coulombic efficiency as compared to the commercial one. So, some modification uh, somewhere is needed, um, the chemical modification to uh, get the exact um, anode material and they have confined their research to this mixed type of oxides as positive electrode and the uh, hard carbon based uh, negative electrode materials. <coughs> Electrolyte as you know that uh, uh, salt is needed and uh, a cyclic and linear type of mixed solvent that is required. So, propylene carbonate, uh, propylene carbonate uh, that has a wide liquidus range, it is starting from 48.8 to 242 degree Celsius and you know that the phase diagram that I described when I was talking about the electrolyte. So, um, both for lithium ion as well as for sodium ion, uh, so that uh, was covered in those lectures. They have high flash point 
P C 135 degree Celsius. So, that indicates that sodium ion electrolytes with high P C content can deliver high performance that ensure a high degree of safety that is true. Ferradian uh, basically use the electrolyte having a composition of E C with uh, D E C and P C. So, they used 1 is to 2 is to 1 weight by what weight percent and uh, difficult to uh, actually know that what exactly uh, whether they are in all their cells they are using that, but this is one of the guidelines and blend it with sodium P F 6 salts not sodium perchlorate and certain ad additive to boost it performance and you know that what kind of additives are probable. They should have the uh, flame retardant additive or F E C kind of additive. So, this kind of additive also they are using to make their own electrolyte and beside room temperature this electrolyte demonstrates excellent capacity retention in the temperature range of 80 to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So, they can cover a wide range room temperature of course, most of the cells will be used in room temperature, but apart from that uh, if you uh, offshoot the temperature to higher range or if you reduce it to minus 20 degree Celsius, then also it is claimed that this cells work. So, this is the type of the cell that is there in the market 12 ampere hour sodium ion pouch cell. You know how to make this pouch cell and uh, um, you can see that it is something similar to that a very uh, um, the design uh, you must be familiar with now. And you see the cycling stability uh, at C by 5, C by 3, 1 C, uh, this is quite good and again back in C by 3. So, this is uh, up to 600 cycle numbers. So, discharge capacity uh, for this cell is quite good, it is a 9 ampere uh, our cell targeted, probably they have gotten little bit less than 12 ampere hour and 0 volt storage capability that is also quite good uh, up to 140 cycles. So, this uh, have been commercialized using the positive, negative and electrolyte material that just I had mentioned. So, abuse test I will uh, talk in a separate lecture. So, for commercialization you need to do uh, this uh, types of abuse test. So, Faradian 2 ampere hour and 10 ampere hour sodium ion power cell. This is actually you will have to do based on certain testing protocol, a standard testing protocol. What they do is external short circuit, they short circuit the cell. Uh, so, no fire or explosion um, takes place and uh, minor pouch expansion only was reported. Overcharge maximum gave only 24 degree Celsius. So, that is not sufficient to reach the flash point of the electrolyte. So, no fire or no explosion takes place. Then uh, there is a hot box test at 130 degree Celsius. Temperature was 127 degree for the cell and there was no fire or explosion. Then there is a flat crush, this is uh, called a crush test and we will talk in details that uh, how these tests are actually done. So, there also temperature rise was 27 degree Celsius. So, flat kind of crush test as well as age kind of crush test both were done. And then there is a nail penetration test that is also one kind of short circuiting. So, you just penetrate a nail across the anode and cathode. So, it will short circuit the anode and cathode. So, temperature raised, but there was no fire or explosion. So, uh, that uh, actually indicates that uh, at commercial level the cell quality is quite good, quite acceptable. So, energy efficiency the uh, round trip energy efficiency is about 92 percent at C by 5 rate. Uh, as you can see that all the tests are basically done at a uh, little bit lower uh, rate and uh, you know that uh, what is the criteria because sodium ions are relatively heavier than lithium ions. So, if you try to extract it too fast then capacity fading cannot be avoided. Um, 
the lead acid energy efficiency if you compare with lead acid it is only 70 percent. So, that means that the for same energy input sodium ion delivers 22 percent more energy than lead acid battery. And uh, this in fact should be taken into account for uh, cost calculation. So, this uh, cost calculation is dollar per kilowatt hour into cycles. So, that increases uh, with lower energy efficiency. So, if you have higher energy efficiency eventually the cost is going down. There is a small example I have given 1 kilowatt battery that operates 1000 cycles energy loss at 70 percent efficiency is 300 kilowatt hour and compared with an energy loss of 80 kilowatt hour in a battery with 92 percent energy efficiency. If both batteries are priced at uh, say 100 dollars per kilowatt hour then the energy loss will cost about 36 dollars for the battery with an energy efficiency of 70 percent that is lead acid battery and only 96 cent for a battery with 92 percent energy efficiency. So, you can imagine that there is uh, a huge cost uh, effectiveness uh, because of the energy efficiency of the sodium ion cell when you compare with the uh, lead acid cell. So, the reference for uh, this particular lecture is uh, uh, again this uh, paper which talks about the commercialization aspect of high energy density sodium ion batteries uh, that was published from Faradian. Uh, so, this uh, is uh, you should have a look and also you should have a detailed look of Faradian uh, website and see that uh, if they have new new update uh, whatever I have included here they are pretty recent update I have gotten it. And uh, as far as the commercialization is concerned there is no book where uh, you can actually see about the commercialization aspect of sodium ion battery. So, that is only one source as far as I know and if you can find some other source uh, you can share it with me but this is uh, one of the sources. So, in this particular lecture we talked about the commercialization aspects of sodium ion battery, what are their advantages, then a brief market survey uh, and also uh, a brief application survey and how it is going, what are their demands. Then major applications are basically stationary renewable energy storage and second one is the transport application. And then uh, a typical commercial uh, sodium ion cell, their characteristics including their cell chemistry um, we have described. Thank you for your attention.